Hello, folks, and welcome back to True Crime Phenomenon. This is Josh coming back at you with another video on our good buddy here, Jeremy DeWitt, Special Officer, General, Major, Four Stars, DeWitt. Okay, so this video is going to go through part three of Jeremy's interview with Corporal Ramsey. And uh, some of the things he goes through is Jeremy's talking about how he got hit on his training bike and you know, got hit by a, a police officer. And then he's talking about Tony and, you know, how Tony, he's always the victim, right? Jeremy's always the victim. You know, apparently he says Tony assaulted some woman on the property. Uh, Jeremy claims he wrote a statement against Tony. You know, he's very apprehensive about making the statement. And it's what got him evicted because a week later after discovery, uh, the attorney told Tony that his tenant wrote a statement against him and all of a sudden he gets a fake eviction notice in the mail saying he didn't pay when he's got him on video taking the check. But the thing is, if the check doesn't clear. That means you didn't pay, buddy. Okay, then he also says he dumped a bunch of money into the property. So he's out like $30,000 that he dumped into this property. Right, Jeremy. Uh, from everything I remember from his testimony... Uh, Tony's testimony is Tony spent the $30,000 on all this material to alter the property for Jeremy. I mean, he seems to have gone so far out of his way to help Jeremy because of, you know, the difficulties he allegedly went through with the miscarriages. And Tony, Tony seems like he's got a pretty big heart, you know, and Jeremy's just, I'm the victim, victim, blah, 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 so on and so forth, ad infinitum agnosium, you know how Jeremy is. And then, uh, let's see, Tony, <laughs> uh, Tony allegedly parks his truck in front of Jeremy's driveway and then threatens, uh, Jeremy and his wife, but Jeremy's not afraid. <laughs> so it's this ongoing dispute. Um, you know, he also says, uh, he broke into his truck. He's got it on video, his tow truck, but you know, Tony actually gave him the money to buy that tow truck and then he gave him a couple titles to his other cars and it's just a, a crazy mess and then a funny thing that comes up is Jeremy always says he didn't actually get in trouble at Chicago they let him go he's got no more court hearings he doesn't have to show up he's very slippery like a little lizard the way he slips around with his words so he says everyone keeps saying I'm out on bond in Chicago but I'm not out in bond I didn't have to pay any money I didn't sign any paperwork so then Corporal Ramsey pulls up the arrest and say, says, okay, on the 25th of June in 2019 at 16.59 hours, you paid $1,500 bond. And Ramsey gives him the receipt number. And then he finally says, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember signing that piece of paperwork. He swears on his soul he'll take a lie detector test. You know, just it's what the, the in the statement analysis is called appealing to a higher authority. When you're lying, yeah, that's what people do a lot of times when you're lying. And don't forget, he also failed his lie detector test on Dr. Phil. So, uh, there's also mention of the two hours on the side of the road where he's talking to Ramsey. And Police Tube's going to be releasing that this Friday, so can't wait for that to come out. Going to listen to it. Everybody go over to uh, Police Tube's channel and listen to that on Friday when it's released. And then they go through all the rules again. That's where I've cut it off because that's enough uh, enough of this interview for me. They go through all the rules. And, uh, you know, Jeremy is – this is kind of the most compliant I've seen Jeremy. You know, <laughs> Ramsey's telling him it's a new, it's a new administration. You know, they're, they're just not putting up with your stuff. So you need to do this. You know, we're kind of bumping the line for you here, Jeremy, letting you do these extra things. So if you just adhere to the policy, you know, just do these things. Just do these things and we won't bother you. The public won't bother you. Just do these things. And he refuses to do them. So, but he actually does sound a little, uh, you know, for Jeremy. I mean, this is like super humble for Jeremy because he just, he doesn't know how to eat humble pie. Like, like the guy in Chicago kept saying Anyhow, so here's the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, this Saturday, I've got the video coming out from the prison. It's crazy one. Hopefully, you guys like the shorts I've been doing. 
And I'm not sure if I'm going to make that video short or if it's going to be a regular video, but look for that on Saturday. Hope you guys have a great week, rest of your week and weekend. Uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to help fund the Metro One Relief Fund, uh, FOIA Relief Fund, you can go to GoFundMe. There will be a link in the description. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Oh, you hit you on your bike? Yeah. Well, one of my bikes, the older one, the training bike. But yeah. But you were on it? Yeah. Right on it? Yeah. <laughs> um, what a dummy. And um, then he sped off and went after the truck that was leading. I guess he thought he was. So I told them to pull over into the shopping plaza. When they pulled into the shopping plaza, at that point, we entered Winter Park jurisdiction. Um, he stopped on Fairbanks in the middle of the road and just sat there. And all of our guys were in the parking lot. And he was, he got out of his phone and he's videotaping us. I'm like, what in the fuck? So anyways, um, it all started because I, I stayed at the same property forever and I should have never moved. Anyways. Is that with a place of about 441 or something? Yeah. We finally moved to this new place and, uh, he, he was like, oh yeah, you know, this is a great place. Anyways. Um, so I was, we were only there two weeks. And I hear a woman scream and uh, I look over and he's holding her and shaking her. And I can't figure out what's going on because the detective won't talk to me. He's shaking her. Um, she's like, let me go. He reaches down into her purse, takes an envelope out, tears it up. Whether he had the pen in his right hand or the pen was in the envelope, I don't know. All I do know is he had a pen. She's kind of batting him away because... Um, he has her up against the car and he's in front of her. So she's kind of like doing this to get away. And he rears back with a pen and goes to stab or well, arms and he misses and he actually stabs himself in the arm. Mm. Um, at this, at this point I was already running from across the field. I can see all of it in front of me and I'm running that way. Um, he sees me coming. He lets her go and she runs to her car, gets in her car and takes off. Well, what car was he pushing her against? You said he was pushing it was car. he, oh, his car. Uh -huh. He's a, He's like a car dealer also, so he has multiple used cars there. Um, so um, about an hour goes by and a unit shows up and he's like, I need you to write a statement. I was like, why? And she's like, she described you saying that you saved her from what was happening. And I was like, listen, I even told him, I was like, we've only been here two weeks. If I write this, it's just going to go bad. And he's like, she's really shaken up. She's crying. I mean, blah, blah, blah. So. I wrote the statement and, um, uh, you know, nothing happened. And then all of a sudden I'm assuming at that point his lawyer filed for discovery or something. And, uh, he called me and he was like, I need you to tell me what happened. And I was like, well, who are you? And he identified himself. And then I said, well, I, I'm not interested in really talking. And he's like, well, if you're going to be a dick about it, I'm not, you know, so I was like, okay, this conversation's done. And I hung up a week later. I get a fake eviction notice saying that we didn't pay rent and I've paid rent. I even have surveillance footage of him taking the cat, the checks. And, um, well, if you have checks, that's all you need proof of. Right. But I still have to put money in the court and this and that. And I just dumped a shit ton of money at the property. And now I have to pay money to get somewhere else. And I don't have money. So, um, I don't even have $500 to put in the court registry right now. So anyways, uh, he's saying that we didn't pay rent. Then in between all this, he had broken into the, it, it started to go downhill. Um, he said he tried to, he broke into the tow truck. I have video of it. And I showed it to the deputy and for some reason he wasn't arrested. I, I just know that if I did any of these things, <laughs> Or if I hit an off-duty officer with my car, I would have fucking been shot in the street. But, you know, um, he, this old man for some reason, and he's old. Oh, we forgot all about, he took my application for rent, took my address, came to my home, blocked my driveway with his truck, got out of his truck and threatened me and my wife. He's an old 70-year-old man, so I'm not threatened. But my wife was shaken up. We called OPD because I live in Orlando. And um, they're like, were you afraid? Did he have a weapon? And I'm like, no, but he still threatened us. So they just wrote a, a report about it. That's all.
And I don't even know if they wrote a report about it. They gave me a case number or an yeah. incident number. They gave me an incident number. It sounds like they took some type of notes. Yeah. So it's just been an ongoing and sounds like you've had a bad year because I know about your Chicago thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That you're still waiting to figure out what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Two of my sons died during birth. In Chicago? No, here. This year? I'm sorry to hear that one. I can't fuck Now, are you having to go back to Chicago? So I know you're out on bond. I don't know what's... I'm not on bond. I'm not... I didn't get arrested. I, everyone keeps saying that. I don't you're know... You're out on what, a $1,500 bond, Jeremy. I'm not on bond. I didn't do any kind of bond paperwork or anything. What? All I did was throw Wait, a fucking chair. 25 June 2019 at 16... Getting old here. 16.59 hours. It says bond date, 25 June 2019 at 22.38. And there was a $1,500 bond. The receipt number that they gave you was a 18760840. And uh, you were released on your own recognizance. Oh, that's yeah. why. Okay, now I understand. I didn't have a bond. I didn't know. I just you signed a dollars I didn't pay anything. I just signed a document. You so, paid something because they don't let you go unless you give the money. I, they gave you a receipt saying you gave them the money. I swear to God, Corp. I didn't <laughs> see. I, I, I never hear. I'm gonna say. I'm telling does you. Does that say truth. bond? Does I, it say bond? It does. does I it say you paid fifteen hundred dollars. It. Does. I swear on my soul, I'll take a poly right now. I never. I and I didn't see this. Hold on. What is this? Ag of salt. What the fuck? Let me see. I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Yeah, they, well, you, they charge you. You know what they charge you with. No, I was you. only told I was charged with uh, assault, uh, simple, assault, assault simple, assault simple, yeah, a deadly weapon, and then criminal damage to property. You, you, what do you, you think? You think throwing chairs from the uh, fourth story, sixth floor? Well, I know. In his report, he said he says six. Yeah, what's funny too is is he says that I threw it at him downstairs, and that's not true either. But for some reason, no threw one told the us police. Him. No hit. The tow truck driver. Yeah. Well, the tow truck driver says you throw it, and apparently, while you were throwing the last chair, the police officer witnessed you throw the last chair. The officer did throw, see me throw the chair. That is correct. Yeah. So, what do you think happens when something falls out of the sky, and it, if it hits somebody, you think that could kill them? I was six floors. Here, wait, 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 wait. Here's the he thing. He says four. Well, six floors. You Corp, think? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. Whether you care or not, I. We we're in a we rented a hotel, which is like an Airbnb. No, I read it says that you were there, that you had a rental car, and I guess you were upset because the rental car is being repoed. He shows up in an unmarked truck. There's no lights, no stickers, no nothing. Right. He just gets out of the truck, and he's going to the car. And I'm like, whoa. We even called the police saying somebody's stealing the car. So I, I know. That's how they got there so fast to see I know. the last chair. So I'm throwing the chair saying this guy's trying to steal our car. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know he's a repo agent coming to repo a, a car from Enterprise Rental Car. Huh. I mean, all I know is, is I'm in Chicago. I'm there to pick up an ambulance for my business. I have two days to get there and drive home. Because if I don't, then technically I'm violating statute by not registering. So Is that only two days, really? Or something like that. So I all I know is, is some guy's trying to steal my truck. So I'm th I throw a chair to scare him away from the vehicle, mm -hmm. and then I call nine one one, and then he's still he he's still trying to take the truck. So I throw another chair. I whatever. I'm, I'm listening. I just God damn it. It's what? I'm Sorry. Doing. No, it's all right. I'm a criminal, so no. Jeremy, did you do your time, Sergeant or Corporal? They would have fucking let anyone else go on that situation. Okay. Listen, that was bullshit. The throwing of the chair was the problem. If you listen, a reasonable, prudent person would call the police I, like you did and I, wait for them to get there. Right. Had you just waited a couple of seconds, the cops would have caught them, and then you would have known exactly what was going on. Right, but they weren't showing up, and I'm I like, know, this guy is frustrating. Sometimes <laughs> it's frustrating, but but you know. And then he said, "See, he told the officer. I don't know if it's in the report because that's the first time I've seen that." He tells the officers that I said I'm going to shoot him. I'm like, with what fucking gun? I got it off in an airplane. It's an impossibility. I. Uh, anyways, you you want to pull up the Windermere stuff now, Court? What's the uh oh the uh, uh the Windermere arrest? Oh yeah, you, you got that? Because no, I mean, I, I mean, a two year old can write a that. better statement than they will. 
I, I, I'll be honest with you. Huh. I don't have it. Yeah. Oh. I have not read any of those statements. I, I can let you I, read it. I, I, what I do know about it is what I saw in the news. That yeah. was it. I, it, Jeremy. We're on a funeral escort, and please Sergeant, say, what's wait, his name? Please who don't used say, to be a motor, by the listen, way. Please don't say yeah, right, and the context of you think I'm making it up, because I'm being completely truthful with you. I have not read any police report dealing with that uh, situation. So I, I'm, I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, it has no bearing on what I'm doing here. Right. It has no bearing on what uh, Sergeant Midler's doing. Right. Uh, and it would actually, it would be inappropriate that if, if we're... No, but to, see, all of a sudden, try to ever since that out. incident, now Sergeant Midler's all of a sudden looking into us. I understand my guys bump lines sometimes, and I and I do... Do you know why out. we're looking at you again? Why? Because you, you've gone from the extreme that you were before, where we've seen video... We've sat down and watched it, where you guys are running people off the road because they get into a funeral procession. Right. right? The, the very clear one was when I had you stop for the two hours you're talking about, when you had the motorcycle you bought, I think, out of Texas, and it wasn't registered, but you put a plate on it anyway, and we, we towed the bike. You remember that? No, you bought a no police. that was that was Ken. You didn't tow my motor. Yeah, we did. We took your motor. No, I, no you didn't. We you took my baton, on. my mace. No, no, no. That was that time. There was on um, one of your escorts. Your guy got further up ahead, and one of my guys that works for me stopped him. We ran the bike. It wasn't registered. It still came back to, uh, as a police Oh, the police Kawasaki. I told you, Kawasaki. Yeah. Yes, remember? I remember, I remember. that. Yeah. But we had the registration. No, you hadn't registered it yet, and you told us that. You thought you had, but you hadn't. No, and I hadn't. Remember, remember when because I told when you? Because when we went to the DMV, we were able to prove that remember they didn't put you? it through the system. Yeah, but remember when I told you was. about the tickets, and you said you've only ever lost one? Right. I knew that one true because we didn't multiple. lose that one. You did lose them. No, we didn't. Okay. So anyway, uh, because I was able to prove that the DMV the, did register, the, they didn't the, the give point me. Here is I'm listening. I lost my train of thought. There. Sure, I'm sure. Let me get back on track here. The point of thought, uh, the, the, the the thing was that uh, there's been complaints, and you saw the one video. Mm. So I mean, listen, I can tell you, if somebody was investigating you to do you in. Mm. All right, and they didn't want to do anything other than just to do you in, not help you. Do you think they would take the time to sit here and talk to you and show you everything they have? When they went, rather like like Chicago, just take you and let you figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. Did Windermere share anything with you? They just arrested you, right? Did they share anything with you? I don't know. I'm asking you. No, the sergeant jumped out of the vehicle and said my name and said I miss you. Okay, because so, he used to be an Orange County sergeant. And who was it? And, and and I I know his name and I can't think of it right. I'm really bad with names and I've had dealings with him, Sergeant. Uh, God, Jesus fucking Christ! I don't even know who it is. So it's about uh, to ask you. De, De Stefano, Sergeant De Stefano, he used to be a sector, th Pine Hills sector three sergeant. Probably sector three or sector one. Yeah, he pulled me over a few times. Um, me and him have had dealings, and well, the point is, anyways, did they did they talk to you? Did they give you information? No, no, they told me my motorcycle was stolen. Okay, but it wasn't. So what we have done is, we have given you the opportunity to come talk to us and try to figure out what's going on to get you back on track. When you see a video of you doing something that is clearly that you know one hundred percent is wrong, when you're doing these charity escorts and the way you do them, one hundred percent wrong, and you know that, okay. Uh, when we, when we see that and the public is calling in, this is a different administration. This is not the same administration that you dealt with before. So whatever leeway that administration gave you was is over. That's done. Okay? And when they're seeing this and they're going, wait a second, who are these people? And people calling in are saying, those are cops. No, you're not. And when you wear stuff that says public safety officer on the back or it says motor officer – that right there tells people that you're law enforcement, all right? And so that's where we're at now. You have gone so extreme that you've drawn the attention again. And this new administration is not like the old one. They're not going to accept that type of behavior, all right? The, the state's not going to accept that type of behavior, especially this times. You know, people are shooting people just because. All right. So uh, here you are doing these type of things, stopping cars, directing cars, 
to take certain actions, whether it be to turn, to clear a lane, whatever, and you're blocking lanes of travel. And people are like, I have a right to travel down this road. You're not a cop. You're not doing anything important to me. Right. So you're blocking me from going. You can't do that. And so people are getting upset and they're calling in complaints. So then what do they do? They go, okay, well, who, what do we know about these guys? Mm-hmm. That's how I got involved because I've dealt with you since 2013, right? So we've been we've known each other at least that long. Sure. So that's how I got involved is they've come and said, what's going on? So I said, well, this is, this is what we have on them. What, what, what happened? Why didn't we do anything before? These guys look like cops. They see the pictures from 2014, 15 till now. You really haven't changed much. You look still exactly the same. No, you've, you've actually gotten worse because you used to not carry a gun. Now you carry something that resembles a gun, that projects. That it, I'm telling you, it is so close to being a gun that it could go either way. If it went to a jury, it could go either way because it projects a, a, a missile that can cause an injury. If you got hit in the eyeball with a, with a pepper spray gun that shoots out a, a paintball size or smaller pepper spray, you think that could take your eye out? I, I, I can assume so, yes. Yeah. So, and, and, and I don't need you to say yes or no because we both know. The purpose of you wearing your uniforms the way you are is because you get more compliance out of the public while you're trying to perform the duty that you're doing. We know that. You don't have to say yes or no to it. I, I know it. You know it. You know? Yeah, but we're not saying we're cops. Doesn't we're not matter. trying Listen, to you don't have to, Yeah, You don't have to say you are. If you wear that type of stuff mm-hmm. just to get that compliance, okay, that's what it is. We know it. You know it. Uh, uh, that's what I'm telling you. It's gone on long enough now where it's so far gone now where you have people calling in saying, hey, look, this cop, this is PSD. This is our professional standards division, right? Mm-hmm. They get complaints saying that one of your guys just did this. They're like, one of our guys? None of our motor guys are even working today. Right. So who is it? So they start going and looking because we got cameras everywhere. They start looking at all these cameras and they go, oh, that's Metro State. I get every time you all run a red light camera. I get the video because you don't those, run them before the funerals entered. Then yes, you do. I, I and listen, he's not here right now because I, I gave him all the videos. But he's got a handful of videos that I've been given that shows you all entering in on an intersection with nothing coming and holding the intersection on a red light. You enter it. That's the only way the camera's going to record you is if you're going on a red light. So it would be impossible. And then. It could be seconds, minutes, or even longer. Here comes all of a sudden. Here comes all of a sudden uh, the 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 funeral procession. Okay, so can I, I can tell you, you've not done it just with that. You've done it with dump trucks too, and you, you've escorted dump trucks, right? Never, never. Didn't escort heavy equipment or anything like down there on the uh, 408. Never. And, and closed down all of 408 for heavy equipment. It was for something you were escorting down 408. You closed all the lanes. Never. Okay. Never so, moved any equipment. Never. Okay. Never. All right. It might have been a chance. I would so. love to see the the red light camera things so I can fix it. Just like I told Sergeant Vittler. I listen, can't. The, this be, is how you fix I, it. Listen. Mm-hmm. Follow the statute. But you you lead. Me, right. He, listen to me. What he told you you could do right. is actually in my opinion, is stepping outside the statute. However, to make things work for you so you can have a successful business, he's giving you a model that will pass the muster test, okay? He's telling you the exact same way we do it. You have a zero bike, which would be you, the lead of the funeral. The funeral director is saying, take my power of being the lead vehicle. Jeremy, you are now the lead vehicle. Right. Jeremy's up at the front. You got five guys behind you, staggered. One next to you, the four behind you, right? Right. You say, we're coming up to an intersection. It's a green light. Go ahead and stop right there. Right. We're coming up to an intersection. It's a red light. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and... Uh, we slow down. Slow down and stop. We're going to stop. As soon as the light turns green, I need you, the guy next to you, to go ahead and take this and hold it. Right. He's going to fall to the back. If he can pass safely, he will. Otherwise, that's where he stays. Right. All right? He, he's telling you to do that. That in itself is not exactly what the statute says, but that would work. 
It would be safe. He's telling you can't have your lights on when you're passing all the vehicles trying to get back up to the front. If you're doing 25 miles an hour mm-hmm. and the speed limit is 35, 40, even if he does 45, he's still under the speed limit, under the what the state law mandates. So if it's 40 and he's doing 45, he's still safe and he catches up because if these guys are moving 20, he's going to catch up pretty quick, jumps back in, waits for you to send him to the next place right. or to tell him to, to hold that position, right? Right. Not leapfrogging so far ahead that you're holding a light for three or four cycles. And on your incident with this deputy, that's what your witness said. The or person, I, I, I'll take a poly. That's bullshit. I'm telling you, he gave a, I mean, listen to me. Basically, everything you said, he said. That's as, bullshit. As the description we he gave. Were right at the light as it cycled. I watched the you car. You weren't there. I, wa- I, wa- I was back, but I watched the car go. He said the light's turning green. I'm pulling in now. It didn't Your guy cycle in three or the four light, times. The light was green right. for the uh, opposite traffic. Your guy pulled in on a red light and stopped him. Not just that one witness said that. There's other people there. Uh, oh. That we didn't even get into. All right. Okay. We've talked to a lot of people with this. I went back and tracked down a lot of people. So you have... Your witness, I'm, I'm using him because he's your witness that you identified. I, yeah. So he says, we sat there for three to four cycles before the funeral procession even came through. How did you know it was a funeral procession? Well, we didn't until we saw the hearse and the limo. And then it was like there was no cars, and then it was, it was sporadic. They were spread out. And not all of them had their headlights on. A lot of them didn't. Nobody had their hazards on. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody had the flags. Uh, I mean, this is how he is, this is your witness, this is how he's describing it. He said that a vehicle came in, took the intersection, directed traffic out of the intersection. And I know exactly what you're doing, because this is what we do, but we we do it under the law of the state of Florida. You're holding that one lane so you can jump ahead and have a safe lane to travel in, but you're not legally able to do that. If, If they can get over there and go up, and catch up to the front of the, the the front of the funeral procession where you would be leading it, not jumping all through. You lead it. Then that would be the the being able to do it without impeding the flow of traffic, without them having to do anything illegal. Mm-hmm. All right, you had three lanes there, so they could have done it. You can't pass a car in the same lane. So if you have a car in this single lane, mm-hmm. and you ride next to that car, but you never cut over. You cannot pass a car in the same lane. Only two bikes or one car can occupy a space in a lane. That's it. So if you have two bikes next to you, you can't have three. Right. No, I agree with that. If you have a car in that lane, you can't have a motorcycle and a car in that lane. Mm -hmm. It's one. And there's video of you passing. Right. What the funeral director does tell them because we can't get back to the front on a double yellow. So, and the judge, we've had a judge say. Have the funeral directors instruct them to move so you can move between the funeral and the yellow line, which is what we do. But we tell you know what I would suggest you do then? Is to get that judge to have the state law changed. Because in the funeral, you're saying he's giving you the okay to do that. The only way he can do that is to change the law. He can't say that the law does not apply to you. Right. The law is very clear on when you're doing escorts. Mm -hmm. There's, There's no confusing part about that. Right. All right, it's black and white. No one in the say you can occupy the same lane because you can't pass on the. It doesn't tell you you can break one law so you can get ahead and avoid another. I understand that. So the only ones that says you can break that you can not conform to is what it says is following too closely, right? Mm-hmm. And what is the other one? We can continue through traffic control devices once it's legally entered. That's it. Right. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Uh, This is Josh, True Crime Phenomenon, with part three of the police interview with Jeremy DeWitt. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, comment below. I'd like to interact with you guys down there. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you'd like to donate to the Metro One FOIA Relief Fund, you can do that up in the description box. You can click on that link. And have a wonderful day, weekend, month, year, All that above. God bless. Have a great day.